Hi, so we're now looking in this short video at chapter 2 from Mechanics 3 on elastic strings and springs. Right, two key formula you need. One is Hooke's law. Tension is lambda x divided by L. And the second is the elastic potential energy or work done in stretching or compressing the string. They're exactly the same thing, lambda x squared over 2L. So let's look at how we use these. Right, first set of situations where your particle is in equilibrium. Simplest situation you'll get, particle hanging from an elastic string or spring. Um, use Hooke's law and it's in equilibrium, so force is up, equal force is down. So between those two you get this and then it depends on the question where you go from there. There'll be one unknown which they need you to find. She might need to just do some rearranging. Second situation where you have two strings suspended from a ceiling. In this situation again you're looking at resolving vertically and you're looking at using Hooke's law and then just see what's needed from the question from there. Third situation on an inclined plane um, so we have resolving is sensible in this case to resolve parallel and perpendicular to the plane so resolving parallel to the plane we have T is mg the component of weight down the plane is sine theta resolving perpendicular to the plane we have R the normal reaction is equal to the other component of the weight mg cos theta so between those two and good old Hooke's law, we can then rearrange and find whatever the questions ask us to. Okay, second set of situations where we'll have an acceleration. Now, you have two main strategies, F equals MA and or conservation of energy. It will depend on what information they give you in the question. Let's have a look at an example using F equals MA. First part is you need to determine if the particle has acceleration. So you're going to need to look at the length of a string when the particle is hanging in equilibrium. So T equals lambda x over L and T equals mg. Use those to get an expression for x. So if x is greater than this, then obviously there will be a resultant force on the particle creating an acceleration. So let's make that assumption. So if there's an acceleration, use F equals MA. So resultant force on the particle is mass times its acceleration. We substitute Hooke's law in for tension and then rearrange to get an expression for the acceleration. As with the other questions, if you're given specific numbers, then obviously you'd substitute them in and rearrange to find whatever's needed. Okay, look at an example here using conservation of energy. So, we have a man attached to an elastic rope. I assume this is a bungee scenario. Um, a platform 120 metres above ground. Natural length for the rope is 80 metres and lambda is 17,640. So, we need him to come to rest at least 10 metres above the ground or it could be quite painful. Okay, the mass of the heaviest man who could safely jump. So, if we look at the elastic potential energy in the string when it's extended to be 10 metres above the ground, the extension would be 30 because we have a platform of 120 uh, natural length. So, platform 120, we need him to be 10 metres above the ground. So, that means the string would be, or the rope, sorry would be 110 metres in length, which is a 30 metre extension. 30 thirties are 900. So we substitute everything in here and we get an energy of 99225. So that's the elastic potential energy in the, in the rope when it's 10 metres above ground. Now the potential energy lost, mgh, is going to be this. So if we equate these two, because all of the potential energy lost has gone into elastic potential energy, demand starts from rest at the top of the platform, and at that 
point of being 10 metres above the ground is momentarily at rest, so there's no kinetic energy to take into account here, it's just all potential energy has gone into elastic potential energy. So we rearrange that and we get a mass of 92 kilograms. Right, that's all for this chapter, thank you for listening.